now. Now we're no. Ready. Now we're. <laughs> now. Right. Mr. Garner, you're one of the most natural actors I've ever seen. Is that natural that you're a natural actor, or you just try not to let them catch you act? That's it. I try not to let them catch me act. Uh, it's it's really. You know, what I strive for is to make people think that's the first time I ever said whatever line it is. You know, it, it, it's very difficult to do. So but who'd you copy that style from? Or did you look at somebody originally and say, that's a neat way to do this? Pretty much Spencer Tracy. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't ever remember catching Spencer Tracy really acting. You know, everything he did seemed so natural to me. And, uh, and of course, I learned a little technique and professionalism from Henry Fonda, who was that way. Henry was very studied. He was very, you know, he knew exactly what he did every moment. Brando's that way. Brando knew everything he did. You know, you thought some of it was just sloughed off. It wasn't. Hmm. Brando knew every word and every every gesture very well. You know, aren't there some people, there are some people who can't sing but are singers. Mm -hmm. Louis Armstrong arguably was a stylist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there are some people that say they can't act, but they're actors. Yeah. Can you name any right off the bat? Steve McQueen comes to mind. I don't think he really considers Me, himself an I actor. Me, I can't act, but uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I, I, I do my best. You know, I try not to get people to catch me acting. Yeah, Steve. Uh, well, Steve was pretty mannered. You know, uh, if you look at the body of his work, you'll see a lot of things very similar. You know, but uh, but he he really forced his personality in there a lot. Yeah. He did a lot of takes to the camera and did a lot of action as opposed to a long stenches of dialogue. Yeah, well, Steve, I, I felt, was an action uh, actor. He, he, he liked action more. He liked his motorcycles and his cars and, you know, and, and he liked the macho stuff. He was one of my favorite actors, though. I always liked oh, yeah. what he did. He yeah. had a, a presence on the screen that demanded you look at him. But that's something you can't work on, isn't it? No, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can do anything about that either. You, either you have it. It's called, I think it's called stage presence. Either you have it or you don't. You find I think Mel Gibson has that too. He has that X factor. Absolutely. You know, Mel comes on the screen and your eye goes to him. Henry Fonda was that way. He came on stage and every eye would go to that entrance. You know, uh, there's a lot of actors that had it, but I don't think you can develop it. Jodie Foster's a special actress, too. She has that X quality, that, that little bubbliness or something that comes out all the time. She is the consummate actress. Uh, she, you know, and, and she has this quality. It's amazing about, and I told somebody this the other day, you watch Jodie, you know, working, and you see her and say, boy, she's good, she's good. Then you look on the screen and she's, she is really good. She comes alive on film so much more than you see when you're working with her. You know she's great and you love what she's doing, but then when you see it on screen, it's even so much better. So she knows she's a, she really is a wonderful actress and knows that camera very well. You have a problem, I think, with people who are maybe not as professional as you. Why, did, why do you think it is that some stars, they're just people like anybody else, just off the street. Why do some people have to act cocky or whatever it is that... Oh, they just got egos bigger than their talent, that's all. And is that because of insecurity? Is that what it boils down to? Oh, in some cases, I think that's the case, you know, but I, I don't think you can lump them in, you know, in, uh, in, in, in a pile. Uh, uh, some people are are egotistical without the talent, <laughs> you know, but uh, some people have the talent and terribly e egotistical about it. You know, in Hollywood, uh, there's a lot of deja vu going on with a lot of the projects that are happening. I think you're living a year of deja vu. You're thinking about yeah. Maverick, and then I think you're never saying never is uh, having to be eaten with the Rockford Files again. I don't think I ever said never, never, but uh, I said things have to change considerably for me ever to do it. And I, I don't know that I'm going to do it. You know, uh, mm. we're talking, you know, whether I'm going to do t the two hour movies, I'm not going to do a series. But uh, I'm talking about doing some two-hour Rockfords. Now, would you probably want to get, like, paid in advance every day? Uh, you got it. You got it. <laughs> if I do it, they're going to pay me up front. Of course, they would probably just want to pay you a little later and after it, see how it does. Uh, no, I think they understand. If you had, <laughs> yeah. If you had a choice between fame and fortune, which one did you ever decide to take? Oh, I'd take fortune any day. You know, fame is very fleeting. <laughs> how about dealing with the press? Now, you've not chosen to do a lot of this kind of thing over the years. Why is that? Well, I don't think I'm a particularly good interview. Oh, that's uh, not true. But, you know, uh, I, I think the projects, that, that some of them that I do, 
require it. And I think today, more so than ever, uh, if you're working on something like this, I think it, it, it's just, you know, mandatory that the stars promote it. Now, if they don't like it and they weren't happy with it, I can understand why they wouldn't. But just because uh, they don't want to, that's no good reason. Were you all in a wad in the last week or so about the fact that the Raiders might be going to Orlando, Florida? Did that, like, cause you sleepless nights or anything? No, it didn't cause me any sleepless nights because uh, I went to the Raiders when they were in Oakland, and I went to them when they are in L.A., and I'll probably go see them wherever they are. So you think they're going to move, or are they just playing? I don't think they'll move in the long run. They may have to play one year outside Los Angeles because I don't know where they're going to play. I don't think they can fix the Coliseum after the earthquake uh, in time to do it, but maybe they can. But I don't think Al wants to leave L.A. I get reports that you are pretty much a sports nut, aren't you? You have your command center at home? You got, oh, <laughs> yeah. I got that I from the inside. Yeah, I have uh, two television sets. I got a 40-inch and 27-inch, and I'm working both of them. And on uh, New Year's, uh, I've got another portable over here that I can watch. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Nice meeting you finally. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Say hi to Terry. I will. He told me about the sports command center. Yeah. <clears throat> that you caught him on the ESPN.